Hello everyone and welcome to another homebrew update. I'm your host Troy and even though I didn't have enough content for you to make a video last week as I said in a Facebook post as well as a tweet, this week I have more than enough. I mean I could probably make two videos out of the content I have for this week but I'm gonna get it all done for this week. The majority of the stuff is going to be PlayStation 4 stuff but of course you're gonna have to wait until I get to that stuff since I have a few other things to talk about first. To start things off, we're going to be talking about the SNES Classic. It's been a while since I've talked about it. The new mod that has been made for it adds hibernation mode as well as a standby mode onto your SNES Classic. Now, to get into either of these two options, all you have to do is press a certain button combination on your controller, and then a screen will pop up on your TV, whatever, and then you'll be able to choose which one you want to go into. It is pretty self-explanatory what each one does, but I'm going to, you know, go through what each one does. So hibernation mode puts the SNS Classic in a very, very low power state to where just the red LED is on as well as it checks for a button combination to put to when you want to start the system back up again. Um, granted now, the cord on it is not that long on the controller, so you could always just, you know, hit the reset button or something like that, or, you know, power off button. So hibernation mode to me isn't really that useful, but standby mode definitely is. So standby mode is like hibernation mode, but even better because if you're in a game and say you want to hit start button to um, pause the game and then hit the controller, hit the correct buttons on the controller to go into standby mode, then it'll turn off the screen and also um, it'll just be looking for that bunk combination to start the system again. But with this one, when you hit that button combination again, it will go straight back to the position where you were when you first went to standby mode. So it's just like, you know, like a computer when you put it into sleep mode, everything is still left up open and whatnot. This is exactly the same thing. It is really cool and I really think that you should check it out if something like that intrigues you. Back in the early days of the 3DS, a certain piracy group dumped a whole bunch of different 3DS ROMs for everyone to essentially take hold of with their grabby, needy hands. Now the same group, Big Blue Box, has actually done the same thing with a Nintendo Switch. Now, of course, with a Nintendo Switch, you still can't run any of the games that they have dumped, but this does lead to one other thing that they actually left in one of the game dumps. They left the master key to 1.0 and 2.3 firmware in one of the dumps. So people actually have access to it now. Now that still won't let you to even run the games. It All it does is help you to decrypt the game so you can read all the content of it and whatnot. So we're still gonna need another key to actually run the games and things like that, but this is a step in the right direction. Now, I also will not be posting a link to the Master Key because it is actually quite illegal to even have on your computer and for even me to even link to it and things like that. So I'm, I'm just not gonna step in that direction. If you remember a couple weeks ago, I talked about a Nintendo Switch emulator that you're able to run on your PC and or Mac. And we're all, all the emulator does is run homebrew. Well, we're gonna add another homebrew to that list and that's gonna be for a Vita emulator. Yes, someone is finally making a PlayStation Vita emulator. Currently, it does not run any actual commercial games. It only runs homebrew games and homebrew applications and things like that. But this is definitely in the step in the right direction. Eventually, I am sure you'll be able to run all your Vita games at 60 frames per second or whatever the Vita runs the frame rate at, I have no clue. But yes, eventually, you should be able to, and then you all guys will probably have fun doing that. The very popular PS3 exploit has been updated. Now, while the exploit itself has been updated, as well as the tools to actually use the exploit, the main things you need to get out of this is that if you haven't used it yet on the new exploit, it will not freeze, and you are now able to actually dump the IDPS and also use the exploit file on any of the USB ports on your PS3, which is good news. You no longer have to have it into the farthest right. You can have it in any of the two, or if you have an older fat PS3, you can have it in any of the four. I think they also made it so you could read even it from cards, like SD cards and things like that, but I'm not 100% sure about that. I will of course put links in the description below so you can check all the different change logs and whatnot out. 
If you have already used the PS3 exploit tools and things, there's really no need for you to use it again unless you haven't gotten your IDPS, which you should really get. Uh, it's just something good to have. Um, that's really it. It's just good to have. You don't really need it for anything else. Next up, we have four things to talk about on the PS4, and the very first thing is a update blocker. Now, this update blocker is different from a lot of the ones you see. The majority of the ones you see are using DNS servers, so you put a DNS IP address under your settings and whatnot, and then it'll just block all the Nintendo not Nintendo, Sony. It'll block all the Sony websites that actually send update information to your console. Well, this one here is not even a program or a DNS. It is a homebrew application you run on your PS4, and all it does is actually create a folder inside of the update folder where your PS4 update is located. Now, why this works, I don't know, but Essentially, it just says that the update is a bad update. Now, it will still actually download the update, but it will not be able to install, so keep that in mind. I just think it's funny how on the PS3, you can actually just delete the update folder and then you can't get any more updates. On the Wii U, you can do the same exact thing as the PS3, delete the update folder, knock any updates, and things like that. On the PS4, all you have to do is create a folder inside of the update folder and then it recognizes it as a bad update. Like developers come on it's not that hard to check and see things like this we've already seen ps2 games on the ps4 but now we even have ps2 homebrew apps on the ps4 yes we have you launch elf and the popular open ps2 loader now although you launch elf is just a file explorer um, I'm not too sure if it can actually run the elf files that the PS2 was able to run from it, but it's still pretty cool. And then open PS2 loader, you can't really do much other than run it because it can't detect any games, especially since you can't use a external hard drive unless you're above 4.50 firmware software on the PS4. It's still pretty cool that you can do this though. For those of you who do not have an SNES Classic or an SNES or for some odd reason just don't want to play SNES games on our PC and or Mac, well you're in luck. On the PS4 people have ported over the SNES Station. Yes, there is now an emulator for the SNES on the PS4 and you are able to install it freely and play all your lovely games such as Super Mario World, Super Mario All-Stars, Super Mario Kart, Final Fantasy, what have you. The emulator does run at perfect frame rate and there's only one catch that the sound is kind of glitchy, but other than that, you can run everything perfectly fine. Last but not least, we have kind of a cool little aspect. If you remember on 1.76 firmware, there is a playground exploit. Um, it's essentially a certain area on the PS4 that is able to load, I guess, more content, I think it is, so you could run other content on the PS4, if that makes any sense. Anyway. People um, have actually ported the 1.76 Playground Exploits WebKit Playground Exploit onto version 4.05. Now this really isn't essentially too helpful type of deal. The only thing that's really helps with is that you can run the PS4 HIN as well as the FTP server straight from the Playground. You don't have to actually push the files from a PC over onto it, which is actually handy and it's probably something I will be using in the future. The best thing is, I mean, after all this exploits that I just talked about and things like that, I just love seeing how the PS4 has developed in so little time and I just want to see it keep on happening. With that last bit of PlayStation 4 information, that is it for you guys. That's all the homebrew I've got. Now I do have a question for you. This question is going to be kind of biased or greedy on my end because of the question that I'll just get to the question. So the question is, what is your favorite rhythm game? Now, if you don't play the rhythm games, that's fine. You don't have to answer. If you do, I want to know what your answers are because I'm actually looking for some more rhythm games to play. I mean, I have played a ton from the PlayStation 1, Parappa the Rappa, all the way to like Guitar Hero, Rock Band, Hatsune Miku, Project Diva, and things like that. I will be answering this question in the next video so you guys will figure out what my favorite rhythm game is. 
All right, guys, and I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like and subscribe button, as well as that little bell icon. That way you don't miss any of my videos. And guys, I will see you next homebrew update.